Hey everybody, it's good to be here together. We're in our classroom again. We're going to take a look at the short story by Kate Chopin, The Story of an Hour, to kind of introduce us to fiction. And everybody should have read this story already. If you haven't, please stop the lecture here and go through and then read the story. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work through in like blocks of paragraphs. So as I go through these different lectures, I'll be saying in paragraphs so-and-so, in paragraphs so-and-so, and so-and-so. And so. With that in mind, please remember that when we cite from fiction, whether it's in a discussion forum or in an essay, that you should always remember inside the parentheses to put the page numbers. So with all of that said, let's take a look at the story of an hour. All right, so after reading, I've gone in and just jotted, th jotted some things down. And of course, the inciting incident, what starts the whole story off is of course, the death of Mr. Mallard. And what's interesting is that we see the story not through Mrs. Mallard's eyes, that would be first person, but we have this in third person point of view. How do we know this? Mrs. Mallard, she's the focal point, the main character of the story, but the story is not told through her eyes. Now, here's something significant, right? Mrs. Mallard has heart trouble, and it's because of her heart trouble that her sister is there while Richards, who's a friend of Mr. Mallard, delivers this bad news to her. There's a good clue here, see how many people picked up on it, regarding the setting of the story of an hour, right? Mr. Mallard was killed in a railroad accident. Now, that's not the dominant means of transportation that we have today, right? He wasn't killed in a car accident, killed in a railroad accident. Also, there's no mention of a telephone call or, you know, a text message, anything of that nature. So this gives us some clues about the, the setting of the story. So with this in mind, that there's no telephones, people rely upon rail for travel, so we could put the, the setting, we could put that at the end of 1800s into the beginning of the 1900s, kind of in that that transitionary period from 19th into the 20th century. Now, this is something significant because if you remember, what we have to do as the reader is we have to be aware of the setting and all of the different clues that are provided therein. So the author is not gonna implicitly come out and tell us what to expect because of this bit. That's our job as the reader. So now, let's see what unfolds next in the story of an hour. Now, what do we see next that happens? And again, this is plot the events of the story. And again, we don't necessarily want to be too fixated with what happens. We've become aware of the inciting moment. We're starting to learn about Mrs. Mallard. So what happens is that she's overcome with grief because of her husband's death, which is perfectly understandable. And then she escapes up to her bedroom and she expends all of her grief. And if you've ever had a, a situation like this happen with the death of a family member, it's like that. It's a, it's a physical force that comes upon you, that outpouring of grief, the, the sobbing, and then you kind of just really, you kind of feel yourself worn down. So we see this happen with Mrs. Mallard, and everything is perfectly understandable, and this is a, a very relatable experience 
for everybody. Now, as we start to go through a little bit deeper into the story, we're going to see some growth and we're going to see some changes that kind of take us by surprise. So now, I don't know if you notice this, but in paragraphs four and five, we have some important imagery. Now again, remember, just like when, in the, when we're talking about poetry, imagery is not only pictures and sounds and smells and feelings, all those different things, but they have to contribute to the story and how the story develops. So now here we have some imagery. There stood facing the open window a comfortable roomy armchair. Into this she sank, pressed down by a physical exhaustion that haunted her body and seemed to reach into her soul. She could see in the open square before her house the tops of trees that were all a quiver with the new spring life. The delicious breath of rain was in the air. In the street below, a peddler was crying his wares. The notes of a distant song with someone was singing reached her faintly, and countless sparrows were twittering in the eaves. So now, what, what do you see significant regarding this imagery in those two paragraphs? What can you find? Pause the video here and see if you can, in your book, highlight some passages, some lines, or if you're taking notes as we're going along and filling up the board here, go ahead and take some notes therein and we'll see if we match up. So remember we're in front of an open window, right? An open window. We have some imagery here. What do we see? New spring life, delicious breath of rain, distant song. Hmm. Now, this is very interesting considering that we were just with Mrs. Mallard and she learned that her husband had died. So we should be seeing some imagery that's maybe dark and oppressive, right? That would help to build that tone. But instead, what do we see here? Hmm, not what we expect. I wonder what's gonna happen next. So, this is in paragraph nine. There was something coming to her and she was waiting for it, fearfully. What was it? She did not know. It was too subtle and elusive to name, but she felt it creeping out of the sky, reaching toward her through the sounds, the scents, the color that filled the air. Now her bosom rose and fell tumultuously. She was beginning to recognize this thing that was approaching to possess her, and she was striving to beat it back with her will, as powerless as the two white slender hands would have been. Something is coming. Something is coming. What is it? What can it be? When she abandoned herself, a little whispered word escaped her slightly parted lips. She said it over and over under her breath. Free, free, free. Wow, what does Mrs. Mallard say? What are her first words after expending her grief upon learning that her husband is dead? Wow, hmm, now, this is something significant happening in the story. So now, think back to the setting. What was the, the time period for the story of an hour? That's right. Now, if we think back to that time frame and we do a little bit of critical thinking, we do some mental addition, what would the role of a wife be and a marriage. During this time, a woman has two main jobs, right? Make babies and take care of the household, right? There's very little freedom. There's not much opportunity. Very few jobs that are out there for women, right? So here we see Mrs. Mallard, her husband dies 
and what comes upon her? Free, free, free. And this is, right, a sudden change that has happened to the character. Does anybody know what we call that? 